Thanks everyone. It's great to be in LA. Uh, it's great to be meeting some of the Grafana team and everyone else involved that we've talked to on the phone. Um, so apparently this is a serious topic. Uh, so I'm going to talk about um, the work we're doing in emergency services um, with a number of customers, particularly in Australia, and the journey we've been on and how we're trying to ingrain Grafana in, in the customers that we're working with, um, get it outside the back room and just you know, get it exposed and get everything visual. So it'd be remiss of me not to mention, so I work for Trapeze, and we, we do transport solutions around the world. Um, a lot of the stuff we do is hardware, we develop software, we run services, we have field crews, we do a lot of different stuff. Uh, but I'm focused on uh, emergency services, and today I'm going to talk about ambulances in particular. Um, so like, we're, we're really proud to be working, like supporting emergency services. We're obviously not in the front line, but we, we, hope, we, we hope the work we do behind the scenes helps them out in some capacity. So the, the information we're dealing with is from the, the triple O call, the 911 call that comes into the control centre, uh, to dispatching ambulances, to monitoring them on scenes, looking at vehicle performance, you know, making sure they're on scene quick enough, get them to the right location, get them out of scene, get them into hospital. There's quite a few touch points within the journey, things like control centre, the speeding to site, the making sure they're not getting speeding fines, and if they are, have they got lights and sirens on, just monitoring everything about what they're doing, getting them into the hospital, sending them to the right hospital, and then making sure they're out, ready for the next job. So just a little bit about our data environment. So it's, it's quite an organic space for us at the moment. Um, it's probably based on a fair bit of legacy stuff around SQL Server. And we've done a lot of work the last year or so with Postgres and particularly the spatial side of Postgres. Um, we work in big geographical areas so that we don't always have cellular coverage, high speed coverage, so we do a lot of work on slow data networks, I'm talking like nine kilobits a second, it's really slow, so we've built a lot of custom protocols around that. The typical fleet can be about a thousand vehicles, monitor you know, 60 plus telemetry channels on, on all sorts of things. Um, and we support that 24-7, 365, and the number's up for debate, but we reckon there's sort of 100 million, 120 million plus messages a day going in and out to vehicles and paramedics. So just a little bit about what that data looks like. So there's a couple, of, a couple of items around things like location, where are they, where's the equipment, is it inside or outside a vehicle, where are the people, and monitoring all this in real time. Making sure they have connectivity, uh, so we do things like run on multiple networks. If uh, one service is out, we need to use others and keep retrying, guarantee we've got messages. Integrating a lot of data sources like vehicle telematics, and the new things around the Internet of Things and the Internet of Life-saving Things, which is things like defibrillators and chest compressions and all sorts of things, and other specialist equipment. We integrate into things like control rooms to, so they have visibility of people, um, vehicles, capability of vehicles, and integrating into uh, the new initiatives like smart cities, so integrating into things like traffic lights so we can get uh, green lights and, and keep them on their journey. Communication over all sorts of channels and, and the integration of information into hospitals so they know what, what to expect with the patient that's incoming. And then all sorts of safety items. So because these guys are usually in harm's way, we do a lot of work around personal duress and video cameras so we can monitor situational aware awareness and even things like uh, monitoring access to drug safes and, and access to, to medicines. So just a little bit on our Grafana journey. Uh, so because um, so we build these solutions for customers, a lot of the stuff we've done is really bespoke. And we really started this process maybe three years ago 
and it was really, as you would expect, full, full bespoke, you no know, different frameworks around Angular and React, um, some of the web bootstraps. We've tried a whole bunch of stuff, looking at things like COT solutions, like Power BI and all the usual suspects, trying to adapt network monitoring tools like PRTG because we liked the dashboards and it was impossible to get what we really wanted and it was really technical in nature. Cognos, Excel, and access and all sorts of different things. So we really found that all these things added up to realizing benefits was really slow. The software development to get something out in the hands of people was just slowing us down. We just couldn't react quick enough. Adding multiple data sources was just impossible. It was like, a, like building something new every time. Most things weren't operating real time. Things like Tableau it just, just wasn't set up to run like this. We couldn't do rapid prototypes. And just the whole technicality of stitching these things hindered our progress. So we really wanted to deliver in minutes. We wanted to be able to rapid prototype in front of users in real time. We wanted it to be you know, synced to those data sources, remove dependency on developers, and some people don't like that, but I think we really wanted to focus development on building things like plugins and really enhancing the solution, not, not architecting something from the ground up to prototype rapidly. Like it just, this allows us to sit with our customers and understand what they need to see and really using that user experience to drive reporting. And we really want it to be an everyday tool in, in everyone in these organizations should have access, they should be able to see what they need to see quickly, should be a no, no steep learning curve. So a couple of examples of things where we're building, so some of them like the traditional, uh, traditional, traditional charts and tables. So this is monitoring things like messaging to and from vehicles monitoring the time it takes to get to a vehicle when it gets acknowledged, a whole bunch of things in that space, how many vehicles are active at any one time. Things like the diagram tool, which we really like the look of, so it allows us to see, because so, we run things like fully redundant data centers and comms, just the the control rooms like to have confidence that it's up, it's green, it's not red. They, they have confidence that the system's working properly. Two things like, if this will play. So things like seeing how many vehicles are in, a, in an area. We've, we've had a lot of success with the maps, the built-in maps in Grafana. So this is showing how many vehicles in a particular area, what the current response time is. Uh, what status they're in, are they responding to a job, are they at the scene, at hospital, the priorities, and then down the bottom, things like how fast are these vehicles going. And down the bottom right, you can see the, so that's saying the red means the emergency lights are on that particular vehicle at the, at the current time, because this is live, obviously. And just to break down a little bit more detailed in speed, I think a lot of our developers get fascinated with this, these sorts of slides. Hopefully that'll play. So this was just showing in like five second refreshes, all the vehicles operating an area, how fast they're going. Um, you can sort of correlate this with jobs and all sorts of stuff. And I'll put a little miles an hour there for, for translation purposes. Uh, and this is just a, like a sped up video of a particular monitoring screen so I can see, so this is just real time tracking a vehicle. Um, we're on the, on the top left hand side, we're seeing things like the ignition's on in the car, the lights are on, so they're under lights. The, we've got things like heading and how hot it is. Um, monitoring things like batteries in the vehicle, so these ambulances have a lot of, a lot of um, equipment in the vehicles that drains batteries, so it's, it sounds boring, but it's like critical to keep them on the road. Uh, what sort of priority job they're on, how long they've been responding. So this, this just allows us to see like real time, near enough to real time tracking for these cars. 
I'll just skip through that one. So then we, we've tried to do things like, so the, the current world map plugin will allow us to plot points and scale points. So we've done some, our first sort of foray into customizing plugins. So we've, we've been doing things like um, stitching together points to make lines, um, overlaying things like critical points within that response to an incident when the crew got the job, when they arrived at scene. So it's an easy way to drill back into jobs, go back in history, like replay how long the job took. A couple of other things for, so a lot of these, uh, so there's a lot of vehicles around, so we're, we're hooked into the vehicle telemetry. We can see things like, is the um, battery low? Are there, are there broken lamps? Is the oil pressure too high? Um, temperature too hot? Uh, and just allow us to integrate this into the fleet management guys, get the vehicle into workshops, keep it on the road. Just a bit of another view of, of looking at that. So you can really quick, they can really quickly see which vehicles do we need to look at. Let's prioritise them based on, based on categories. And another view for so something like our field techs when they're commissioning vehicles, they've just got a quick view to see I can see the lights and sirens go on, I can see the, the crash sense will go off, the handbrakes on, and a whole bunch of testing things. And then allow us to see things like, particularly down the bottom with voltage, that, that when, the, when the paramedics get in that car, it's actually gonna start. And we can, we can do some sort of predictive modeling on this to see like degradation of batteries and you know, you know, put in place things like optimal replacement programs. And something we're working on at the moment is just, just overlaying a bunch of information. And we've been toying with the, the annotation tool to see if we can get, like, flag annotations automatically, but really allow people to analyze the data, flag an annotation, pull it out, put in a, shop, a request to a workshop to service that vehicle. So I thought I'd touch briefly on we haven't done too much customization on plugins, but one we thought was really useful. I'm hoping out of maybe out of the next two days, I'm sure people have probably done some of this stuff before. So we're looking at things like calendar controls, so we can overlay um, things like when a car's booked in, how many jobs we responded to on a day, um, was it a heavy, medium, low um, day, sorting it by hours. So we're, we're starting to get a little bit of traction in this it would allow us to drill up and down, just a really simple aid for scheduling. And we talked a little bit before about the world map, so we're definitely not done with this map, and uh, we're definitely keen to hear if other people have been down this path before. In terms of what's next for us, um, so we're, we're really, I guess that when we first started on the Grafana journey, we had a lot, had a lot of pushback from our development team and, and we were able to, uh, the best way to say it is that they kept coming up with reasons why we couldn't do it and we needed to you know, keep building the Angular dashboards. But we've been able to um, deal with all of those requirements from our development team with roadblocks and our users. And I think we're, we're sort of at the stage where we've got a couple of use cases that would really enhance it. Um, so the, the world map looks definitely a key part of what we're doing. Um, I think Torquil might have half done something on the horizontal charts. Like this, is a, this is a big, just a really good visual indicator for us, particularly around the stacked line charts. And then we're really interested in uh, pulling in things like live data sources. At the moment, we're polling databases. And I think there's some real improvements in that space. Um, so on the left is really where we are now. We're looking at a whole bunch of things to really um, allow us to ingest a whole lot more data and analyze it on the fly, aggregate it up, um, throw it in a data store. So we're looking at Apache and Spark. Uh, we don't really have a good um, alerting engine at the moment. So we're looking at Prometheus and Influx in that space and really, and looking at stuff like when we're not you know, in the moment, in the emergency, we wanna, we wanna really store that data and retrieve it later for analysis and really looking at building up our message queues, our anomaly detection, and, and our big data stores. And we sort, of, we sort of feel like 
Grafana gives us that visual ability. We can, you can start conceptualising it now and you can start really building these use cases. I think that's all I've got. Thanks everyone. <laughs>Thank you, James. Um, we can just have a seat here. Hi, everyone. My name is Callum. We've got a quick, quick couple of questions here. Um, so first up, people are curious about some of the development work you guys have done, especially the map panel. Has any of that been open sourced, or is there plans to open source any of it? Yeah, I think. Still working. Oh. Yeah, I think our plan was to. Sorry, our plan was to open source it. Um, we're sort of in a bit of a prototype stage at the moment, but yeah, we, I think we definitely look to open source it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, another question here is about the actual data stores you guys are using, um, what sorts of retention policies you have, and whether or not you do data roll up. So, it's not working. <laughs> um, so, the, the retention policy is a big uh, point of discussion in our group at the moment. We I'm going to say it out loud, we don't really have one and we, we really think we need it and it's probably some of what's driving us to look at Prometheus and Influx particularly. Okay. Um, finally, I, I'm personally curious, what's the, it seems like a lot of work has gone into this, what's the one like key takeaway that made all of it worth it for you guys? Uh, it's working. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, so the key takeaway, I, I think, is really to, for me, it was get it out of the back room. It was really getting it into our customers' hands. Like that, that's just been a game changer for us, and we, we really, we really struggled to find the right tool that we didn't have to build ourselves. Like it's, so we're able to sit down with executives now and talk through them. Like it's, it's just just change the conversation for us completely. Right, it makes it a lot easier to show the value. Definitely. That, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, there's another question here. How are you managing authorization for all your different roles? Um, so at the moment we're just using the uh, built-in Grafana and we're looking to probably move to LDAP pretty quickly. Okay. Um, people get their questions in still here. In. Yeah, they're still coming in. Um, how much dev time did you save making custom Angular pages? versus, so Grafana versus custom dev time. So my rough estimate is we had like two developers working for 12 months. Mm. I reckon I got the equivalent of two panels out. When we, when we moved to Grafana, it was like a weekend, like it was, it was just miles apart. Right, okay, <laughs> quite a big difference there. So um, I was just gonna, so our developer that was building the Angular pages, we threw him the world map panel and that was sort of took him about three days to okay. build a panel rather than architect from the ground up. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, last question we've got here, what kind of tools are you using to transfer metrics from the remote devices? Um, so we, we basically have like a, a custom messaging protocol, so it's really lightweight protocol, so it's like a, a publish subscribe model, so our servers subscribe to vehicles, they throw it on the bus and we throw it into Postgres primarily. Yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. Well, let's have a round of applause for James. <laughs> <laughs>